Who should you believe about the most likely path of our energy future? An interest organization representing the fossil industry? An NGO with a green agenda? We think there is a need for a dispassionate forecast, which is why we created the Energy Transition Outlook. As a company serving all corners of the energy industry, we have used our expertise to produce an impartial report that maps our energy future until 2050. This is our energy future. Our energy mix is decarbonizing. Led by wind and solar, renewables will meet half of our energy needs by the middle of the century. Fossil fuels will continue to play an important but reduced role in our energy future, making up half of our energy mix compared to 80% today. In the next decade, natural gas will become the single biggest source of energy. To see how we get there, let's first look at the megatrends which will define the transition. This is the heart of our energy future. Traditionally, energy consumption has moved hand in hand with population and GDP growth. But we are living at a historic moment where energy demand is decoupling from population and GDP growth. You may be familiar with the concept of peak oil or peak oil demand, but what we need to be focused on is peak energy. Let's examine energy demand more closely. From the 2030s and onwards, humanity's energy demand will actually start to go down. So how is this possible? More people, Greater economic output for less energy seems counterintuitive, but we can give you one very good explanation, energy efficiency. Take the kerosene lamp as an example. Only 2% of its energy is converted to light. The rest is wasted on heat. Instead, millions of households in developing nations are turning to off-grid solar for their energy needs. Electricity equals greater efficiency, and there will be a lot more electricity. Here you can see it taking a more prominent role as the final energy carrier, more than doubling its current share of final energy demand to 45%. Electrification is having a huge impact on the transport sector, and we expect price parity between electric vehicles and their combustion engine counterparts by 2024. In the land that gave us the muscle car, North America, there will be 180 million electric vehicles on the road by 2050. Sales of new electric vehicles will outstrip those with combustion engines by 2027 in Europe, followed by China, India and North America five years later. Such a radical shift may sound expensive, but that is not the case. The rate of energy expenditure will slow to such a degree that by mid-century, as a percentage of GDP, the world will be spending 44% less than today. The nature of spending will also change. Renewable spending is mainly up front, so the emphasis will swing from operational expenditure to capital expenditure. And if you are in any doubt the pace of the energy transition, here is something for you to consider. More capex will go into grids and renewables than fossil fuel projects from 2029 and onwards. The future of our planet remains fragile. We are on course to miss the two degree limit as agreed in Paris, but the affordability of the energy transition gives us an opportunity. There is no silver bullet, but if we dedicate more resources to increase energy efficiency, clean energy and carbon capture and storage, we can create a sustainable future.